I swim with a group called Mercury Swimming, which is like an adult master swim. And one of the men in the pool was saying he was training for peasant man. I'm like, what's that? And uh, so he sort of unpacked what the race was all about. And so I'm like, well, I love the idea that it's so close. You know, it's only an hour from where I live. I love being a part of a first race out of the gate, so to speak. Um, I, you know, Great Lakes was like that, and so was Incredible Man and Peasant Man. It was like I got to be there right on the ground floor where their very first races that, they, that you guys launched and that they launched. It's just so much more fun. They're better supported. Usually the volunteerism, um, the volunteers are pretty close to the race directors. It's often friends and family of the race directors, so you're getting top of the line treatment by the volunteers, which is great. And um, the nice thing about Peasant Man too was my husband was able to volunteer, and so he was able to be out on the water in a kayak. Um, although he didn't follow me in the swim, he was able to hang with a couple of my friends while they swam, which was really, which was really neat. So I think that's kind of special. And then at the end of the race, when I got to the run portion, um, Mike was actually able to join me for the entire run, which I thought was wonderful. And my friend Ray Ray also raced, and his son is a marathon pacer. And so I had another friend that was racing Peasant Man, who we fondly call Bacon, because his nickname. So Bacon was doing the half. And so Brandon, who's Ray's son, paced Bacon for the half marathon. And then when his dad came in to finish the full Peasant Man, he ran the full marathon. So people don't know this about Brandon De Pasquale, but when he was at Peasant Man, he wasn't like in the race, but he ran with two of the racers, so he ran, you know, he, he cranked out some miles, right? I mean, he ran 40 miles. <laughs> when I got to the run portion of Peasant Man, my girlfriend Kim handed me a veggie burger, and you know, says so like, wow, this is great, I'm eating a veggie burger, and my husband's running with me, and so the family atmosphere is really awesome. And I think that's why I personally prefer, you know, sort of the novelty races, or I call them boutique races. I do the marketing for Once Again Nut Butter, so I'm their communications manager. Our company is all about healthy lifestyle and health and fitness and, um, you know, getting people to eat nutritiously and participate in things like that. And so if there's a triathlon or if there's like a major athletic event that's going on, we want to be a part of it. It's a way that we can support athletes, but also it's a way for us to support our brand and hopefully, you know, let's face it, increase sales a little bit. Um, we recognize that um, athletes are looking for a really good nutritious product and we offer that so it's just kind of like a mutually um, beneficial sort of relationship. To my knowledge we sponsor every triathlon in Western New York and then we started a program called Livingston Athletes. It's basically a collective marketing initiative for all the running races in Livingston County and there's about 13 or 14 of them. And so we cross promote everybody's races to help drive the um, sort of runner membership up, if you will, and try to get people to really race in Livingston County. So if you live here, we want you to race here. Not that we don't want you to race elsewhere too, but we really want these local races supported. So we sponsor all of those races as well. So total, it's about 92, I think, different venues that we support between running, cycling, that's the other thing is we support cycling and um, and then of course the the triathlon community and duathlon. Once again, Nut Butter has been in business since 1976. It started off as a worker-owned co-op, and when the founders um, retired, the company became an employee-owned company, and we formulated it as an ESOP. Um, there's about 70 employees that work at Once Again, and we're all owners, and so we make our decisions collectively. We do a lot of voting. Uh, we are a fair trade company. We grow our organic sesame seeds in Nicaragua. And about 20 years ago, Jeremy Thaler, who was one of the two founders, him and his wife founded the company, uh, went down to Nicaragua and uh, started out with just like planting 20 acres of test plots and today, or I'm sorry, four acres of test plots. And today that's developed into sustaining 2,000 farms in Nicaragua. And so the company's had this long history of doing micro lending and, um, and economic development. And so last year we actually added peanuts as the rotation crop. And when Champion Products moved out of Perry, New York, Jeremy arranged for the purchase of about $80,000 worth of commercial grade sewing machines 
shipped them to Nicaragua, and then, then they started a sewing cooperative so that it promoted stability. So the farms there that we've worked with really have sort of this rags to riches story where the farms have gone from, um, you know, having homes made out of bits of burlap and tin and, you know, things like that to like having concrete homes with running water and the families have access to medical care. And, and so the companies had this really long history um, in supporting the community. And Jeremy's vision, who is our founder, really believed in community. So he started once again Nut Butter in this little tiny town of Nunday, New York, with the idea that he wanted to supply really good paying jobs to rural America. And so he had this vision about once again Nut Butter being in a community unto itself through a worker ownership model, but then also looking to support communities nationally and internationally. So at a national level, we were the first organic certified peanut butter company in the world. We subsidized the organic peanut crops for the first five years here in the United States. And today we're actually the world's largest organic almond butter producer. And so the company has really seen a lot of exponential growth since I've been there. And so this model of community has really helped. So locally we actually support over a hundred charities a year and we literally, you know, give thousands of dollars to on the school systems. After the Philippines disaster, we donated 44,000 pounds of peanut butter to help with the disaster in the Philippines, which fed about 21,000 families. Um, just to give you an idea of how much peanut butter that is, if you've seen like 55 gallon drums, if you can imagine 44 of those, that's how much peanut butter it was. So we, we donated that. Um, anytime there's a world disaster, like the earthquakes in Japan and Haiti, we donate. Um, highly nutritious butters to those communities. So I kind of tell people um, our jar is on a mission and it's almost incidental that it's like this great tasting product um, because we really are missional driven in terms of our sustainability model. So we look at sustainability kind of through three lenses. One is um, being good for the environment through organic farming practices and green uh, technologies and then also from an economic development standpoint in terms of helping um, to make sure that our supply chain is, that the people in our supply chain are well cared for. And then we have the social aspect uh, through community development and support. Uh, Jeremy and Connie, who started once again Nut Butter, had started many businesses throughout their lifetime and they started many uh, worker-owned companies. And so it became once again Nut Butter because once again they were starting another employee owned company. And so we were once again Nut Butter because once again they're starting another co op. So that's where our name came from. So there were four baby raccoons that were found on our factory grounds. And so they were adopted by the employees and they were raised on our Nut Butters and then they were released into the wild. And Jeremy and Connie had a raccoon that they named Rocky, and they decided to make our logo in honor of Rocky Raccoon. And he was raised on almond butter, and then he was released into the wild. And to this day, we give all of our byproducts to nature lovers and farms in, in the area. So whenever we change over the lines, we get um, mixtures that come through the pipelines. And so those mixes go to area farms and to nature lovers. Our products are found in natural and organic food stores and co-ops across the nation. Um, so in terms of like the Rochester area, it's available Abundance Food Co-op and Lori's Natural Foods. Whole Foods is coming into Rochester and our product will be found at Whole Foods. We also make a bunch of different uh, private labels for various companies. Um, and so I guarantee you, if people are eating an organic peanut butter that's in a glass jar, because we only do glass, and it has a gold lid on it, and you're going to your favorite local mass market grocery store, even if it doesn't say once again nut butter, it's probably our product. So part of my job is buying advertising for the company. It caused me to have to read a lot of health and nutrition magazines and magazines about fitness and things like that. Um, as part of my job to understand like what publications I should be purchasing advertising in. And in doing that, I just really started to feel convicted like about how out of control I personally had become in terms of my own health and fitness. And um, I actually was, at that time, um, I was obese. And so I 
started out um, just running and I wasn't really able to run every day because I was I was not overweight I was obese and so I basically pulled my bicycle out of the garage um, that my dad gave me when I was like 16 years old and I just didn't know better and I like dumped a whole container of motor oil on the chain to like grease it up and like pumped up the tires I don't even know how the tires still had held air but they did and so I started just riding my bicycle and I remember thinking that you know 14 miles was a pretty big day if I rode my bike and uh, I got to a point where I was like gee you know I kind of wanted to ride the bike every day because it was so fun and I'd be like well this is a running day I can't ride my bike today because I have to run today and then I kind of thought about that. I'm like, geez, when I was a kid and I rode my bike, nobody ever said, today isn't a bike day. You know, I would just ride my bike. So I decided, well, I'll ride my bike whenever I want to. And if it's a running day, I'll still do my run. And uh, one afternoon, I went out for my bike ride and I came back and I grabbed my dogs and I went and I did a five mile run and came back. And my husband said, you know, honey, if you add a swim, you just did a triathlon today. And I went, wow, that's kind of something. So. I didn't really know how to swim. I knew how to like dog paddle and like not drown. And, um, and I felt comfortable in the water because I've grown up on the lake my whole life. But I didn't really know how to swim. So I took swimming lessons. So all this kind of happened around my birthday, which is in mid-January. So I started like the running and in January and then in the spring I started biking and then over the summer I kind of added the two. So in August I started taking the swim lessons and my company sent me to a trade show in Hawaii and um, while I was there I was looking for a 5k race to run and I didn't find any but I found this little sprint triathlon so I signed up for it and I rented a bike and so I actually did my first triathlon in Haleiwa which is on the island of Oahu and so that was my first sprint triathlon and I was pretty much hooked after that and it just began this entire journey of changing my lifestyle and so um, back in that January time frame when I first got started I became a vegetarian a couple months after that and uh, lost about 66 pounds over the period of two years and um, I've competed in I don't know over 20 or 30 triathlons at this point and I've done some marathons and half marathons and I try to really support the local races and I definitely have some favorites that I tend to repeat every year. Like I always do Try in the Buff, I always do Peasant Man. We have our own little triathlon that we do here on Canisius Lake every year that's just kind of some friends and stuff so I always do that one. It's not an official race but it feels like an official race because we train for it. At Cuca Lake Triathlon I, I raced that with a broken rib one year. I broke my rib in a mountain bike accident and the doctor said to me you can go and participate but don't race it. So I went and I participated, but I qualified for nationals. So I went to Vermont and I raced in Burlington at nationals. So my whole career at Once Again Nut Butter um, has been wrapped up in doing races and just being healthier. And so, um, yeah, I guess that's another reason why Once Again has been the best job I've ever had, right? It really helped me get my life back together.